Oh my God, talking gladiators. Okay, so I'm going to be talking about the expectation effect. I'm a brand strategist. I'm hugely interested in behavioural psychology and thinking about why people do things and what motivates them. Um, and um, last year I attended a book launch with regards to um, the expectation effect. Um, the first thing I wanted to cover off is just sort of, you know, understanding the fundamental role that our expectations have on the things we do, the way we act, um, and actually what happens in our lives, where we get to, where, what we achieve, what we don't achieve. Um, so what is expectation? Expectation is a strong belief that something will happen or will be the case. And I'm sure you all came in here with an expectation of what would happen tonight. When you see somebody, you have an expectation of what they're going to be like, um, what they're going to, um, you know, knowledge they're going to impart. Um, and often we find that this expectation isn't right and we reset our expectations. So expectations are a journey. Um, William Shakespeare said that expectation is the root of all heartache, which I, I think, you know, I think we've all put too mixed expectations on a relationship and then, you know, realised that that person isn't quite what we were thinking they were going to be. Um, what I learned was quite interesting about expectations and mental stamina. Um, like there's a load of people on the screen here, and actually what all of these people do is they wear very similar outfits, and they do that to reduce what they call um, their sort of mental load or ego depletion. And this is to do with thinking, if I make less choices in a day, I've got more time to use my mental resources for making the decisions that are really important. Actually, that's been proven to not be the case. And actually, we've got enough mental resources to do all the things we want to do and to choose a green skirt if we want to choose a green skirt. Um, also, expectation creates placebo effect. So, you know, we, when we expect a drug to work, guess what? Research finds that the drug works better on patients who are expecting it to work. Um, and how it works is that when you expect something positive to happen from the placebo pills, you release endorphins and dopamine, and that creates pain relief. And therefore, guess what? You have better impact of the drugs or the placebo that you're taking. It does actually have an effect because you're expecting it to have an effect. There's also negative expectations. So there's something called the nocebo effect. And um, the guy whose book launch that I went to is a guy called David Robson, and he talks about that loads. Um, and this is one that I love. Expectation explains why diets don't work. Because if we are expecting a food to have lots of calories in it, um, and we sit there and we eat the calories, um, we feel fuller for longer than if we think it's a diet version of the food, whereas we could be, con could be consuming exactly the same calories. But... Um, People who've consumed less calories two hours later will be saying they're hungry again, or they think it comes, they think it's less calories. Will be saying I'm hungry again when actually they've they're, they're not. They've had the same calories as the other group. You've got to read this guy's book. It's so interesting. Um, loads of stuff about expectation and age. So there was a whole research study done that looked at people in their twenties. If you expect that aging is going to be, you're going to be old and decrepit. Guess what? More likely that you are going to be old and decrepit. If you think old age is going to be full of fun, then it tracks through that you are going to have more fun so um loads of things about expectation um there's a little experiment here about what what you see and i don't know if anyone wants to shout out what they what they see in this picture a duck and a, oh, you, you see, a duck and a rabbit. Well, the, the point here was that seasons set our expectations. And I was hoping that all of you saw a rabbit more than a duck, because obviously we're coming up to Easter, and we already started priming for Easter. So brands do this a lot. They start priming you with stimulus and, you know, putting Easter bunnies in front of you. And so you see an Easter bunny. Um, Biases create expectation. So if you have a certain belief or you grew up in a certain belief system, you will enter a situation with a certain expectation of what's going to come out of a certain meeting or um, event or situation. Um, so I think it's very interesting that we can harness this power of expectation and actually sometimes by maybe bringing a barrier down on, on expectations that are negative or sort of stopping our own limiting self-beliefs to be more positive about our expectations can help us have uh, better outcomes in all sorts of different aspects of our lives. Um, I'm a brand strategist, so I like to think how I can apply this to my work and what I do. So, I mean, you see it all the time, um, but brands can leverage expectations to create loyalty, um, you can harvest, harness expectations to create standout campaigns. So here we've got, um, you know, obviously a campaign around, you know, imagine a C CEO, is it a man? So it's actually asking you to like confront your own biases and expectations. Um, and brands should and could be doing that more. 
Uh, we've got an example of seasonal priming. So we've got a coffee bean that looks like an egg, obviously looking at sort of expectations of Easter time. Um, and then also you can, you know, you can break down expectations by, by st presenting statistics. So there was just some stats there, 97% of students don't take drugs or something like that and actually you know I've got a teenager who's 18 about to go to university she's like oh everyone's gonna be taking drugs and things but actually they're not all gonna be taking drugs and there's some stats here to prove it even though I'm thinking oh god 